Hi there, welcome to this series of videos on four principles of simple design. In this video, we'll look at the theory behind four principles of simple design, what are the four principles and that kind of stuff. And in the next video, we'll look, next set of videos, we'll look at a few examples of implementing four principles of simple design. Let's get started. Uh, what are these four principles of simple design? The first question is why simple design? Um, what we have seen over a period of time with agile and extreme programming coming to the fore right now, uh, the focus is on meeting the requirements of today and not to think a lot about future. So in that sense, we want to keep uh, things simple. Uh, we'll introduce an extra level of indirection. That's a new method or new class when it's needed, not right now. So what we are looking at right now is simple design. And the other important thing is that for a starting developer, let's say I'm a developer who's starting, I have probably half year of experience with coding. So what should be I thinking? I would not know all the design patterns, all the complex design things. What should I think when I'm trying to code something? So these are the four principles of simple design, which can help you to be able to properly design a system, at least to a certain extent. Uh, these are actually are uh, invented by or these are created by Ken Beck. Um, these were mostly used. Uh, these were first used when extreme programming was becoming famous. And the aim of extreme programming, extreme programmers was to just write code which follows these four principles of simple design. Okay. With that theory behind us, uh, what are these four principles of simple design? I'll just list them out right now. We'll look at each one of them in detail. Four of them are runs on all tests, minimize duplication, maximize clarity, and keep it small. Different people use different terms for some of this. Like maximize clarity might be called as write understandable code or uh, increase understandability, anything of that kind. But basically, these are the four principles. Uh, let's look at the first one, which is runs all tests. Uh, everybody, I think, wants their system to work. So basically, any system that we build should be satisfying the business requirements. And how do you assure that? That's through tests. Uh, and where the automated tests like JUnits really help is that uh, uh, design is usually considered as design evolves. What The current thinking about design is design cannot be created in one day. Somebody cannot sit and design the entire system in one day. But actually, a design of a particular system evolves over a period of time. And this means you would have a constant changes in the system. And you should be prepared to these, do these changes. And if you don't have proper automated tests, people will be there, developers would be reluctant to change anything in the system because there is a high chance that you need to use defects if you don't have automated tests. So that's basically the reason why you should have good automated tests like JUnits, for example. The other thing is testable code leads to better design because people are more folk, like uh, more willing to change code. And also you see uh, like with things like test driven development are like uh, are known to pro uh, like produce really good code and test driven development is also a good design tool because you start thinking uh, from the use from outside of a method rather than thinking about the inside of the method. So that's why that's the first principle runs all tests. The most important reason is because design evolves. You, sh you should have a good test bed so that you have design improving every day. The next most important thing is minimize duplication. I don't think I need to talk a lot about it. Yeah, having same thing done in multiple places means multiple changes, probably multiple testings, must, uh, bugs. So I'll skip that. The third principle is maximize clarity. This is mainly concerned with the maintainability of the code. Any piece of code that we would write would be at some time or the other would be maintained by somebody else. And it could even be you looking at the code two, time, uh, two weeks or three weeks after. Uh, so any piece of code that we would want to, we would write should be maintainable. Um, I think there are a lot of things that you can do to make your code maintainable. That's uh, to have clear code. Uh, as a start, if you are a starting developer, the most important thing is to get your names of the methods 
and variables right. What we have seen is if somebody tries to get the name of the method right, if the name of the method really indicates what the method does, it leads to very clear design. I mean that alone is sufficient for you to have a basic design. But the other important thing you can look at is to have single responsibility principle. That's basically having uh, every method or every class should have one responsibility. So these two I think would be good to get started with to maximize clarity in your code. The other important thing is to keep it small. As you all know, I mean the effort in uh, getting something perfect is really, really high. For example, I'm just taking a theoretical example here. I mean, taking design from 90 marks to 100 marks. If let's say somebody is reading your design and you want to go from 90 to 100, that's really difficult compared to getting from 70 to 90. And as you all know, I mean, software development, with every effort that you put in, there is a cost involved. And you would want really good returns for the effort that you put in. So taking design to a perfect level, probably uh, like introducing new levels of indirection and all that kind of stuff, which involved a lot of effort. Uh, if they don't give you the uh, returns which they have to, then probably uh, the effort which you are putting in might be wasted. So for example, if any new component that I'm creating does not improve clarity or does not reduce duplication, then you should think if it's really needed. So that these this principle that basically says if you are introducing a new level of inter indirection that's like creating a new package or probably creating a new class probably creating a new method and if it does not if it does not improve clarity or if it uh, does not help in reducing duplication then you should think about whether it's really needed okay that's basically the four principles of simple design in the next videos let's look at a few examples thank you bye we are creating more videos as we speak and if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.